Okay, welcome back into my Vanguard Stocks and Shares ISA update and also my personal pension for the month of October. As usual, another month has gone by way too quickly. We will dive into that in just a moment. Before we do, we'll have a look at the global markets and just see what's been going on in the stock market over the last month. So starting with the big boy, the S&P 500, that did see itself down in September by 5%, which lived up to the name of September being the single worst month in the stock market when you go back all the way through the decades. 5% down is a pretty terrible month. Now, so far in October, we're pretty much flat. We have seen lots of quite volatile days though, with especially those big movers, the big Magnificent Seven, lots of those tech stocks jumping up and down with some of the different news stories that's been going on at the moment. Where we'll finish this month, who knows as always, but typically, again, and if we go on to kind of historic averages in the stock market, you should see a rally kind of October, November, December as people get excited for Christmas. It's very weird, but unfortunately, the stock market is driven by human behavior. And when we get excited, we like to buy shares, apparently. Now, closer to home in the FTSE 100, as you'll see on screen now, it has actually a pretty good last month, up 2% for September, believe it or not, and um, flat for the current month so far. But they did also take a hit today as I'm filming this on Thursday, the 19th of October, when everything else overnight got hit over in the US. As usual, the FTSE 100 isn't immune from those global changes. And really, and a good reminder is that the FTSE 100 at least generates lots of its income abroad and internationally. So, you know, I kind of use it as a gauge for the UK, but really, I mean, strictly, it's not really when you actually think about it. Now, the biggest news story, as many of you will be aware, really is conflict in the Middle East, which then stirs up lots of different issues with the economy and lots of different issues with different stocks and markets and how they react. One of the biggest effects that conflict has at the moment is really on oil prices. And as you know, oil prices will feed into every single thing that you buy. It's not really just about what the fuel you put into your car. It's also you've got to think about the things that cost of transportation and moving all the goods around the economy. And also, if you just look around yourself, think about what goes into every single product that you buy as well. Anything made of plastic that obviously comes from oil. And if I look around now, I mean, pretty much everything's plastic. I mean, so if we have a look at oil pricing now, we'll have a look at the chart for Brent crude. At the moment, it's around $90 a barrel at the time of filming this video. We're still a way away from the all time highs that we did see, at least in recent times, back in 2022. And we are kind of seeing potential rumors that we could be heading toward $100 a barrel. Not necessarily very good for us. And from a consumer perspective, you will see, of course, at the pump going up very, very quickly in terms of filling up the car. But then also everything around you will go up in price over time as those costs feed into that. Now, another interesting news story that came out recently was this one here on screen. Now, the US Department of Commerce announced on Tuesday that it planned to curb the sale of more advanced artificial intelligence chips to China. And if you think about who makes these artificial intelligence chips, you are looking at the likes of NVIDIA and AMD being some of the biggest stocks which did get hit recently and with that really being unsure of what's going on. It does feel like every other week there is some kind of trade war going on. It's always interesting because China is the biggest producer of all of the goods that everyone likes to buy as consumers in the UK and Europe and the US. Yet when it comes to some other areas, you know, the politicians love to have a good fight amongst themselves. But anyway, as usual, expect lots of volatility in those stocks. If you are involved in those kind of high end technology stocks and you're putting a lot of money in, they're going to be volatile no matter what happens. Now, onto kind of positive news, at least you are a shareholder of Netflix. They had some great earnings recently. They beat expectations and subscriber growth too. Now, just look at this price chart over the last few years. Have a look at this on screen now. And one thing I wanted to highlight here, I think this is a perfect example of the madness that is the stock market, especially if you want to be an individual stock investor. You've had a peak of there around $650 in share price and a low of under $200. And that is in a time frame of around just six months or so. So as a reminder, if you aren't yet invested or you're a beginner investor and you do want to get involved into individual stocks, do accept that this is the crazy price of admission that you have to pay. Not every stock is as volatile as this, but even those stable ones, if you look at the kind of 52 week price range of most shares, it tends to be around 50% at least as a kind of difference between the highs and lows. So this is a big reminder. If you are going to go down that route and buy those individual stocks, be extremely careful about the price you pay because that is extremely important in your future returns. Now, on the other hand, you might be sat there happily with your gains in Netflix, but you're probably also a Tesla shareholder. You've seen Tesla's earnings reported just yesterday, and they've now dropped over 7% in a day. It's time of filming at the moment, but I'll pop up on screen as I'm editing what the latest are. Now, as you can see, they did kind of miss a few different estimates in terms of the delivery numbers and certainly on the profitability side with the share price now sitting around $220. For some perspective, let me just put up the Tesla price chart because I was looking at this the other day just thinking Tesla's actually made no returns over the last three years, which is quite incredible. 
And whether you'd kind of um, put a lump sum in at that time or your dollar cost average, you're probably about break even at the moment or actually underwater, which is fascinating, really. So unless you were in during the run up of 2020 and 2021, you're, you've really gone nowhere, which is fascinating, really, considering the hype around the company and considering how many people have really gone all in and bet the house on it. Again, on the likes of individual stocks, I'm always very cautious when I look at these sort of things with so much hype around the company and different companies, which I would throw the likes of NVIDIA into, that you can't have the sentiment being that everyone thinks this single stock is going to make them incredibly rich because the stock market doesn't work like that. Not everyone is going to be suddenly extremely rich over the next few years. Truly, anything could happen. And there is still a lot of speculation going on about what could happen rather than also focusing on what's possible today. But hey, again, that's just the price of admission if you do want to get involved in individual stock picking. From a UK perspective, I get very bored with UK. Not really much going on from that perspective without really talking about inflation and interest rates, which to be honest, is probably going to bore everyone. Uh, Damien did a really good update the other day. And as you know, inflation data kind of remained steady and steady being a bad thing because it's just way too high at the moment. The number came in at 6.7% at the moment. But as you'll know, in your own real life, what you actually experience might be very, very different, especially when it comes to food and fuel and all those other things. We're still not out of the woods yet from trying to control this. The Bank of England really are in between a rock and a hard place, to be honest. I would not want that job. As much as I don't really like to make predictions, I can see interest rates being held at kind of that 5.25% level for quite a long time, to be honest, rather than being moved up or moved down. I think we are going to kind of see that table mountain effect now and keeping those rates high for a very long time. And that will flow through, unfortunately, to lending, and especially mortgages over the next 18 months, which is going to be a very interesting thing. And I'll have to do an update on that one in a few weeks time. Okay, portfolio time. Let's jump straight into the account now and I'll pop this one up on screen for you now. I will also turn this UK number, this 55,841 into a dollar figure for our international viewers. So you can drop a like if you quite enjoyed that one. As you can see, not a huge amount of movement this month, really. When I go to the investments tab and have a look at performance, we can see that things have been pretty flat. So I'll just go down now to the month by month chart, which is quite an interesting one. I always like to see how things fluctuate, really just to show you what you have to put up with as an investor. And as you can see, last month we were sat on a few different, um, a little bit of a, a decline in the overall value. And now at the moment, at the time of filming this, just up £30. We are close to that all time high. If we just go again back to the performance chart, and have a look at the graph. We can see we peaked with both the investments from 16th of August. That was at just under 57,000 pounds, 56,950. And we are very much trying to kind of nudge above that one. We did actually hit that one for just a single day at the start of August with 57,000 there. But we are kind of nudging higher and higher. As I do repeat myself and often go, it is nice to see things in the green from a mental perspective that kind of investing works. And this is how money compounds over time. But really, as a long term investor, and because most of this is a pension, I'm not really too fast about the short term performances. And actually, the lower it can stay, it means potentially over the next few years, I would like to add to this pension as well, because this is um, from different previous employees that I've had and I've put all the money together but actually in my current gig as being a YouTuber now working for myself I would like to be able to add money into that and I will do that potentially after I've maxed out my stocks and shares ISA which would be my first port of call at the moment. Now my current stocks and shares ISA for this tax year is over on Invest Engine. Now I do do portfolios update on that one and don't forget have a look in the links in the description if you are a new investor and you want to open up any kind of investing account I do have my preferred platforms down there. You can get free cash and free shares just for signing up and that does help support the channel as well. Now, just on the investment itself, I did make a note to go through this one because I'm always unsure on these portfolio updates, kind of what to go into. I try and, you know, sprinkle a couple of bits of nuggets of wisdom of what I've learned over the last 10 years. As usual, I'm not a financial advisor. I make plenty of mistakes and have made plenty of mistakes on the way. But let me just go into a little bit more depth on what's actually inside the FTSE Global All Cap Index Fund. This is my only investment I hold in the SIP and in the ISA. So all of my money is invested into this single mutual fund. So why did I choose this one in the first place? Let's dive in. So let me just get this one up on screen now. So on the Vanguard website, this mutual fund comes in two different flavors. You have accumulation and income. And just as a refresher out there for everyone, the accumulation version, the one I'm in, will take any dividends because there are companies inside here that pay a dividend because it is a global index fund after all. And it will just reinvest those automatically in the background the income version will give you those dividends and pay cash into your account. Now, when I first opened a Vanguard account, I invested in two index funds, which you can actually go back and have a look through the different portfolio updates that I've done. I mainly invested into VUSA, which was the S&P 500 index fund ETF, and then also an emerging markets one. 
Um, and as good as they are, and as low cost as they are relatively, the downside of both of those was that actually they paid a dividend, which although sounds good because then you can reinvest it, unfortunately, at least on Vanguard's platform directly, firstly, you don't get an email when you get that money. And secondly, you can't buy fractional ETFs. So for example, if the cost of the VAV USA is at the moment, what was it, 60, 70 pounds or something like that, unless you get 60 or 70 pounds, you can't invest. So you're going to be sat there with money trapped in your account. So I thought, okay, well, I'd like to avoid that. And really, I wanted to set and forget portfolio. And also, rather than kind of pick and choose and build a few different ETFs on Vanguard's portfolio, on, on Vanguard's platform, I really just wanted a single place to store all my money. And the good thing about having a mutual fund like the FTSE Global All Cap is really you get exposure to everything at market weight in kind of the most purest and truest form of index fund investing. And as you can see here, you've got over 7,000 stocks represented. You have a global portfolio with 0.23% as an ongoing charge, which put on an annual basis is pretty damn cheap. And if you have a look here as well, just in the portfolio data perspective, you can see where all your money is. And it's pretty much because it's market cap weighted, it is where the big money is. 63% is in North America, 15% Europe, and so on and so on down the lines. And you can see the different countries represented, pretty much represented by the size of their equity markets. So for example, if the US suddenly faltered and has a very terrible decade, you would see the fund probably made up less from the US and then spread across the rest of the countries who have a better decade, for example. But as we don't know the future, I would rather just invest as market weight perspective and let the market takes care of itself. Otherwise, really, you're just betting and speculating, which is fine. And a really important thing to say, it's very important for everyone to just find what works for them. But the main issue I have a lot of the time is that often people make very bad decisions because the information they get in the first place is either wrong or they don't have all the information. What I'm a passionate advocate of is everyone finding an investment strategy that works for them, but not seeing them go down an insane route of going all in on a penny stock because they were told on YouTube that this one's going to go to the moon. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm really an advocate of finding what works for you only once you've digested all that information, understand what level of risk is right for you, and then going for that one and sticking with it as well for the long term, which is extremely important. Now, just on a side note, if you're looking for some other investments, let's say if you were using Trading212, for example, and you can't invest in a mutual fund, but you can go into an ETF, remember that I did share a couple of different portfolios on my Invest Engine platform. Now, annoyingly, on Vanguard's platform here, you don't actually have access to all of their full suite of ETFs, which is probably a decision from their perspective because there's more fees, to be honest, to be made in some of these mutual funds. But one that springs to mind if you wanted, for example, a global ETF, which would be available on pretty much any investing platform, would be VWRP, which is the accumulating version of VWRL. So sorry to get technical and throw some jargon at you, but many of you will kind of know what I'm talking about there. That gives you access again to a global index fund and one that I would say would be a, a solid place for lots of people to start, especially if you're a beginner, if you want access to the entire market for a very low fee. So that would be one, for example, if they actually offered on Vanguard's website that I would go for. But anyway, we'll leave it there for this month. Thanks so much for tuning in as usual. Drop a like on the way out. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, happy investing.